friends. We are here today in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And what's happening in this chapter is essentially Paul is asking them to give money. Now it's important to note that he is not asking for them to give him money. He's made that very clear many times. That Paul has no interest in getting money from the church. Though there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, the church is... They would often give the apostles, you know, money to do their ministry, just like many ministries. Many ministries are are paid for by by the people that they're ministering to. But it is Paul's practice to not to not get money for for those people, so that there would be no confusion about his motives. Anyway, Paul is asking them to give money, not to him, but because there's a famine in Jerusalem. And he even mentioned it in the book of 1 Corinthians. He's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be coming by and I want to bring some money to the saints there in, in Israel. And I think this is just a, a very interesting point here that, that, you know, Christianity changed the world. That is undeniable. But in one of the many ways that it changed the world... It, it changed the world in a sense of generosity. You know, before then, everybody kind of lived for themselves. You, you may know people today that might be more generous than some Christians that you know, but, but it is undeniable that when, when Christianity came around, it, it changed the way that people thought. You know, that now we are not really living for ourselves in this life, but we are living for others in this life and we are living for ourselves in, in the life to come. And so this is a, an important chapter where he's talking about generosity. So what happened was when he came or when he wrote his first letter, he said, you know, I want you to take a collection for, for the church in Israel and and they started doing it and then something must have happened you know maybe when people came around and started telling started telling uh i'm just grabbing this this is a gigantic feather here um they started telling him that he that he wasn't fit to be their their leader you know their spiritual leader and i think that somehow in all of that they started making the collection and it never never ended up going to the church there. And so Paul is saying, you know, I I want you guys to to finish what you what you have started here. And he's he's saying, you know, the church in Macedonia did it and they gave they gave quite a bit and I think what may have happened is when Titus came, he didn't even bother with it. He was like I don't want I don't want them to give anything right now because it's important and it's funny because the first time I read through this chapter I was thinking okay this is just a chapter where Paul is asking for money but the second time I read it I was like I feel like he's saying a lot of things saying why not to give maybe not why not to give but how to give how to give correctly you know he it's important to him that they're not giving for the wrong reasons he wants them to give out of their out of their abundance for one but from a true heart and i think the key to this entire chapter is where he says you know though christ was rich he became poor for us and he doesn't mean that jesus was ever actually rich but he was he was god <laughs> you know he even though that he could have been glorified in heaven for all of eternity he came down to earth and he was crucified for us. So though he though he was in that that high place, he he sacrificed. He sacrificed coming to earth and then he sacrificed himself for us. And the, the example is that we are we're supposed to live like Christ. We're supposed to do that in the same way. So obviously we can't we can't step down from being God because we are not. 
but we can we can be generous with other people you know that's that's one way that that God has modeled that we really should take to heart and we really should strive to be and I think what, what else is interesting about this is that I don't know how many times I have done this where I will fully intend to give to some sort of ministry and I'll be like oh yeah I really should start doing that <laughs> I really I should jump on that and my intentions are completely right but but just sitting down and making it happen it's like when am I gonna find the time to you know go on the internet and type in the name and you know get out my credit card and, and do all of these things you know I I don't know partially because because it's you know, I'm looking at my finances and what I can afford and everything. You know, I I say I want to do it and in my heart it's it's a little difficult. But also just like when am I gonna put aside the time to do it? And I feel like that's kind of what happened to the Corinthian Corinthians. And I, if that's not exactly what happened, I know it happens to us today. And so I'll use this opportunity to say that that that's something that I do. That I I put off giving you know so my 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 heart may be good but but i think my heart would be much better if i actually did it so if you are like me i would encourage anybody watching this you know if if there's somebody that that you have been wanting to give to or some ministry or even your own church and you're like you know i've been meaning to give this money um i would really Take this opportunity now that you've watched this to just go ahead and do it to say all right once i once i get off once i get off youtube i'm gonna go i'm gonna find this ministry and and i'm gonna start giving you know in the next chapter it says god loves a cheerful giver and i'm, I'm really excited to talk about that but um but yeah i think make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons but but make sure you do it also. Anyways, that is 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Have a great day. Bye.